Hello, good evening. So finally, head and neck. And what we have done is, so we'll integrate head, neck and brain all together. Right? And it will be a great fun. So before we start, that official thing. Just a medical disclaimer that all the images whatsoever will be displaying, they are for educational purpose only. All right, so enough of that. So for the head and neck, see so you are going to feel the heat right from the first session. The thing is that what I have tried to do is, so for the head and neck, As I said, that brain is integrated. Because see, what's the point? Right? We we learn that, okay, this is skull, this is interior of skull, this, that, everything. And then when it comes to brain, once again, we go back to the same thing. Why not to keep on learning all the things parallelly? So it's not like that today we'll be learning only the bones, right? Though the whole idea is that we'll be starting with the skull. But in that process... Trust me, by the end of today's session, you will be knowing about 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 cranial nerves from where they are coming out, from where they are entering, what exactly is happening to them. You will be knowing about the arterial supply, you will be knowing about the venous part, you will be knowing about the all the sinuses, right? Along with different parts of the bones. Now, normally what happens is that skull is taken as like like that uh, only the major features and then every bone is studied individually actually what really happens is that if someone tells you okay where is the petrous part of temporal bone and then then you feel like that where exactly it is right so here what we have tried to do is literally as we see and we feel like that okay what which opening is this what structure should be passing through it and then we'll actually trace it all the way right so and, and there would be lots of repetition because there'll be all the bones right of the, all the bones of skull they are irregular bones right they are flat bones but they are irregular so there is there are lots of shapes so it is like say say that sphenoid bone so there will be body there will be greater wing there will be lesser wing right in between that uh, pituitary body is sitting Right? All, all sorts of things. So we'll try to make it as simple as that. But parallelly, I really wish that once you we complete the session, link has been given. Right? I'll put that PDF. You download the PDF. Revise it at least once or twice. Because tomorrow, when we'll be starting with the second part, right? it would be difficult for us to repeat the entire thing. Right? So, I'll be taking it for granted that you have seen the first part properly, you have understood it and then we'll be mounting our knowledge further and further. Else, it would happen like we'll be keep on repeating same things. Right? So, today there'll be at least two, three repetitions. But don't forget to revise it. it you, you are, there, are, there are structures which you are bound to forget, but no worries. Once you'll keep on watching it and plus what I've done is, I've Try to see the same structure from various angles. So try to create that entire entire picture in your mind. Right. The best part of today's session, in fact, for almost for the entire head and neck, it would be like that. There, this is the only blank page. Right. Otherwise, once we'll start, there'll be only images and images. Only images. There is minimal of theory. There is all practical, and it's a great fun. Right. <laughs> One more important thing, for about say 10 days, don't touch any of the book. Yeah, don't touch any of the book because it would happen like that you will find that say foramen oval to that is given in chapter number 9 and we are discussing it on day 1, yes. By this method, we will complete the entire head and neck. Trust me, by the end of that session or by the end of that, that phase, your clarity would be phenomenal.
then we'll go for the theory that okay this is this this is this and and some other theoretical stuff right so that's what i wanted to say now for today say the skull as such it is divided into two parts right just two parts one what is called as the cranium right the head which is like container for the brain and the second is the facial it is facial no, right not fasc right the face face facial skeleton our focus would be on this today what about the facial skeleton that would be coming in a second session right but one thing is very clear that if this is the whole skull right so we'll be watching the upper part we'll be watching from the back side will not be covering the face right today will not be covering will not be touching much of the face as such some of the bones will definitely be taking but not in depth because eyeballs right that is ear sockets then nose mouth they they are pretty complex so will not touch them till we finish our entire understanding solid right will definitely be looking in detail the base right the base of the skull the base and then we'll slice the skull and then we'll look inside right so we'll also be considering inside of the skull this would be our pattern for every organ so once our this entire support system is ready because today we'll be talking about skull right tomorrow we'll be talking about even the vertebra c1 c2 and c7 and the typical ones right we'll talk about in depth about that once that is complete we'll straight away be heading for those important organs larynx pharynx right then then what about right yeah nose tongue etc then then what about the blood supply that is what we'll take in the second round right but parallelly say for example we are learning today the interior of the skull so yes you will find lots of vessels which will be studying today right so it will be to complete the picture but then like other regions will do it over here also blood vessels one day only for blood vessels so all the way from heart till circle of villis that is what is formed in the brain will will cover each and every artery each and every vein that's how we'll do then obviously the cranial nerves right the complete round all the way from 1 to 12 and then ear eye and other organs right that will keep on taking so it would happen like by the end of this entire session some of the areas like larynx pharynx tongue nose right all those bones something which people are afraid of you'll be super confident right so don't worry at all and how many lectures don't ask this question because i don't know right i don't know this is this is absolutely goes as per your your uh, convenience so it's like at times if i feel that yes this topic was heavy immediately i make next topic bit light right so it it would take some time but this is something which is so important so surely i'll not be rushing the, or or skipping any of the topics right so i don't know honestly how many topics would be there yes 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 we'll be taking from monday to friday definitely saturday uh, uh i'll i'll keep it as a reserve right saturday i'll keep it as a reserve as such i'll definitely be trying to take it on saturday also because so much of material is to be prepared and and you'll you'll see see the stuff today right so as such yes we'll try to take it every day uh monday to friday definitely all right chalo let's start so this is officially right and it is the smiling skull the day you feel that head and neck is very complex na you you watch this skull right he is always smiling and and that is that is a very big mystery when the skull is always smiling how the face can be udas right how the face can be can be sad we'll see that thing when we'll be learning those facial muscles right 
Ah. See, this is what August, August September, right? Yeah, definitely will be will be able to complete by November. No doubt about it. Okay, so let's start with our skull, right? See how how gentleman he looks like, right? And and it looks like that smiling skull and with that that tie right so very very genuine very and, and and always smiling so first thing first what we really do is let's put a crown right that is a very weird crown but well this is a crown when this is crown right so all the way from here to here there would be a suture and that would be called as the coronal suture. The suture word will keep on coming. Suture is like a junction. It's like a junction between two bones, two or more bones. Right? So that would be the thing. All right. One more thing. This is right in front right this is right in front so we'll call this bone as frontal bone right because it is absolutely in front so in head and neck as such if you see we'll be dealing with we'll be dealing with skull that skull which will be attached with cervical vertebras right cervical vertebra and they will be from C1 to C7. Whenever we discuss any of those vertebra, some are typical. Typical means their characteristics, they are quite similar. Right? There is very less difference. And atypical means that they have got some speciality. Right? So, in this case, C1, C2 and C7, they are special. Right? They are special. So, that means it, it boils down to three. Sorry. Three four, five, and six, they all are typical. Tomorrow we'll talk about it. Tomorrow we'll talk about it. Just one, one interesting thing which I would like to say. Say normally we say that this is one vertebra, this is second vertebra, right? Just one, two, any one of it. And in between, what do you find? In between, it is, it is, yes, you will say that intervertebral disc. Right? That is always there, which is acting like that shock absorber and, and so many things. Classically, between C1 and C2, remember, there is no intervertebral disc. Oh, yeah. There is no intervertebral disc. There is a complete ligament support. Right? There is a complete ligament support which is leading to this and that's the reason that tomorrow we'll see right that would be tomorrow all the movements that when you say yes where exactly is happening when you say no where exactly is happening why in martial art they see that um, truck right they, they just move the skull like this and truck neck is broken right what happens when 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 the person is hanged to death right so then what happens to that knot it, it breaks what? All those things, they will be related to this area. Right? So, these are all cervical vertebras. Right? Cervical. Then, obviously, all those ribs. Right? They, those ribs are there. In this case, say we have just put rib 1 and 2. That's clavicle. And that's the manubrium. Right? Manubrium. Manubrium means shield-like. This is sternum. Sternum. And finally, this one is the xiphoid process. Xiphoid process. Why we are taking this as this portion? That, that one. This is what is leading to formation of superior, superior thoracic aperture. 
right that one is superior thoracic aperture through which so many structures will be passing right just keep it in mind right now we'll not be dealing much about that part all right just eventually say we are when we are talking about those cervical vertebra right so just into our entire spine cervical so they are seven then thoracic you know it very well 12 ribs so there are 12 lumbar right you know it again very well there are five then sacrum though fused with each other but at least they are five right and coccyx right? which is like those small ones which are three to four so total is giving about 33 right 33 5 and 10 22 27 29 and 33 so oh the crown looks like the hair we used to draw in childhood exactly that's what i did <laughs> uh better to revise the whole week on saturday so that will be good uh that's a good idea that's a good idea we can plan that so it would be like a high speed revision of the entire week. Yes, we can do that. Right, I'll keep this thing in mind. This is a good suggestion. We can do that. Okay. Because it will give me me also some breathing space. Right, I, I can prepare that, say more topics and more, more material. And then we'll go for the high speed revision of all the PDF. One, two, three, four, five. Right. That's good. We'll, we'll see that. Uh, so here it is now from sideways. And yes, and every time those those drawings will be like that only, right? So so it's since when have you started feeling that bade ho gaye? Right? Person is child till the end only. Okay. So here it is. This is this is right this is right all those sound effects they are normal right so this is cranium right this is cranium and that's the facial skeleton facial skeleton what is that layer by layer means See, please, just, just focus. You'll automatically understand. Right? Okay. So, this cranium, this is like a vault. Vault means it is like a container. It is like a container. And in this container, there would be brain. Right? Regarding the vertebra, we talked about the typical and atypical. So, one, two, seven. They are atypical and rest, that is 3, 4, 5, 6, they are typical. Right? These are atypical. Atypical means they are some, they are having some special features. Now regarding the bones which we'll be dealing with, that how this entire structure is made. This one is mandible, right? And will not be touching mandible right now. In fact, we'll be removing the mandible so that we can watch all the areas very properly for the skull here are the bones we have spotted frontal right which was right in front so we talked about it that that's frontal and the posterior most is occipital right that is occipital both of these bones they are just one unpaired so it means front and the back right they are one and then from both the sides there are three bones right sphenoid sphenoid right and we'll see all these bones temporal temporal and the parietal parietal right they are two 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 let's finish whatever is very easy to understand frontal is easy right front occiput you just put your hand back and you see the prominence well your hand is exactly on the occipital bone so this is also easy right 
and when you create blunders in in viva and then you say are ye kya kar diya right so that is where you are tapping your parietal bones right and then you do ram 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 right so when when you do like this so it means that is temporal right the sphenoid where is it well sphenoid is bit hidden so we'll we'll see that right we'll come to that okay meantime watching the same gentleman from the posterior side so that's what is can you can you really i just zoom further if you can yeah now it is seen better right see this is all this ragged line right they are sutures so let me remove this now that is suture this is occipital right that is occipital bone this one and both these sides they are parietal parietal and this one right something which is slicing the whole body into two parts so it has to be named as sagittal correct so this is sagittal suture sagittal suture then we do have this 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 all the way and that's called as the lambdoid suture right that is called as the lambdoid suture so till this point we have learnt three bones properly one occipital which is on the back and above they are the parietal and then that was the frontal which was in front now this piece this piece this one right it is called as lambda is it necessary to remove all these names yes very much very much and trust me by the time you will finish your head and neck you will be having thousands of words in your inventory right that is what i always say when a medico fights with a non medico right so you can use any of these words and and they would not understand so so right so this is fine lambda that is where this sagittal suture and the lambdoid suture they meet actually what it is they are called as the fontanelli right we'll will be talking in detail about it but fontanelli's fontanelli's we said that there is anterior fontanelli and posterior fontanelli what was that right in the last session grand finale of this that abdomen during the parturition it is these are the areas where where the bones have not fused so actually these bones they can slide over each other so that they can change the dimension of the skull for the delivery right so this is what is called as the lambda or also it is the posterior fontanelli so i'll just write lambda over here now if that is the case if we really go back right it's not here okay all right it will come hmm. so that's that's the lambda right now for the anterior one okay see now we have got the skull only no sphenoid is spared sphenoid is definitely sphenoid jo hai na i'll i'll show you chalo let's clear the doubt i'll i'll show you where the sphenoid is hmm. so this is where i'll i'll draw and i tell you something very interesting about it see this is a suture correct this is also a suture right that is also a suture 
and this one is also a suture fine now if we start telling that which bone is this this one would be frontal right that is easy to figure out okay this is parietal all right this one would be temporal right temporal and and that one right that is another suture and this one would be occipital right occipital this is sphenoid that's sphenoid right and and because sphenoid is inside so obviously sphenoid will be on the opposite side also so that's how things are uh, associated this area must change the color this area this is very important right this area one more word one more word and that thing that is called as the terion that is called as the terion now imagine if you call someone terion or lambda right they, they won't understand Therion is that point, Therion is that point, this one, where four sutures meet, right? Four sutures meet. And potentially, this makes it very weak because these sutures, they are weak. So now you know it very well that in martial art, why they give a chop at this point? Why when the latte is hit, so then it is hit at this point, right? And another important thing is that when we'll discuss in detail about the blood supply just underneath just underneath inside right there is a very important artery that is middle meningeal artery branch of middle meningeal artery is passing over there right it is just passing over there and it happens like that this is the bone and that artery is sitting like this so if the bone if the bone breaks it would snap the artery it will break it now because the artery is is surrounded by bone right there won't be any soft tissue to just collapse it stop it right actually in order to stop that bleeding one has to do the bar hole bar hole means this portion has to be drilled right it has to be cut flap is taken out and then you have to take care of that bleeding so this is very important right I'll keep on telling you something about the forensics also along with it, right? So remember, this is this is terion, right? That's what is called as the terion. Terion is the point where four bones meet: parietal, temporal, sphenoid, and frontal, right? And potentially, it makes it very weak. So this is on both the sides. It is terion. Posteriorly, right? There was lambda and the bregma. Bragma would be right on the top. Where would it be? Bragma would be over here. That would be the bragma. And bragma is what? That when you watch the skull from the top, right? So this one would be coronal and this one would be sagittal suture, and that point would be would be the would be the bragma. Right? It would be the bragma. That means right on the top that would be the bragma okay so hmm. right so this one this one would be the frontal right now see the boundaries of the frontal all the way all the way and then Okay, over here, over here, see the suture, it's like here, and then it goes up, goes up, right? So that's how the frontal bone is. So it would become much easier for you to understand that when we'll be talking about the orbit, this is called as the orbit, right? So we can safely say that, okay, frontal bone will be forming the roof of the orbit, right? So that's how we'll keep on visualizing our entire structure so that's what we said that in case of cranial bones we need to do it this way because the bones are irregular 
right bones are irregular so you have to be familiar with every bone that's the mandible we talked about it ah uh, yeah sphenoid is very important in fact every bone is important every bone because there is speciality of every bone okay so here it is now this time i'll not draw all the all the sutures because you need to see it properly so see here it is right this one so that one would be terion which we talked about terion rest of the bones you know so now i'll just put it like s for sphenoid this is the temporal right this one would be parietal this one is frontal and that is occipital pretty easy right let's add something extra before we say goodbye to mandible for this particular session right we just have a look at something one say this a very nice joint right this joint this joint that is called as the t m joint the bone involved is temporal bone so temporo and the mandible so mandibular mandibular joint so temporo mandibular joint now if you really want to feel it just right ear and right ear and then just over here and open and close your mouth right you will be able to feel the temporo mandibular joint right so that's temporo mandibular joint just behind it is there is this is external auditory meatus meatus means opening so that is external auditory meatus i would like to erase this line and draw it something like this because there are two important structures one this is what is called as the mastoid process mastoid process right this mastoid process is just behind the ear so behind behind the ear when you palpate you will find that mastoid process now this mastoid process is will be giving all the way sternocleidomastoid muscle that's the muscle which is you are using for tilting your head right rotating your head for all those purposes that very important muscle so this is the mastoid process and then there is a very stylish process uh, can you see this one this one right very stylish and this is that's why it must be the name it's called as the styloid process styloid process right so that is so we learned that mastoid process external auditory meatus styloid process and all of them they are over here the part of temporal bone right so now we are familiar with at least say this much sphenoid frontal frontal is one sphenoid is on both the sides temporal is on both the sides parietal is on both the sides and occipital just on one side that is posterior right now i'm highlighting one area this one this one let's zoom this one this it this right now i'll erase it this area see there is a joint and that's the suture right so over here this is the temporal bone and this bone is called as the zygomatic zygomatic this zygomatic bone is actually very cute 
because this zygomatic bone right it is also called as the cheek bone so whenever you smile whenever you laugh those prominence they are over here right so so this is this is a very sweet bone right so that is the joint temporal and the zygomatic this entire thing which we highlighted that is called as the zygomatic arch right so that one right that one so where this is the temporal part and this is the zygomatic part and this is called as the zygomatic zygomatic arch right heart of temporal is very big so he said okay, no problem i'll not tell it temporal arch right so it is zygomatic arch which is a joint operation between temporal and the zygomatic fine so these are the areas what we learn from this moving on to the see now it is like goodbye to mandible right so we have removed the mandible and we'll invite the mandible after few sessions because we are about to rotate the skull okay see these are those stylish styloid process right styloid process and these prominence they are the mastoid process which you can feel very easily just behind the ears right and now you know the frontal and this one this bone now it makes sense right now it makes sense this is the zygomatic bone zygomatic bone actually i remembered all these bones like zygomatic it is the cheek bone right it is a cheek bone and say as we are talking about it say this one this one this is let's right here right so that is maxillary so how do you remember maxillary is upper jaw bone right remember it like upper jaw bone so that your upper jaw is by maxillary lower jaw that is obviously by mandible right so now the picture is getting complete that's that's the maxillary right then we do have over here this is zygomatic that zygomatic is forming the arch right and it is talking with that temporal so that is the formation of temporal right and that is the zygomatic arch and then from top there is frontal from both the sides right from the top there is parietal below temporal and behind it is the occipital so that's how the entire skull is now ready the boundaries are done In a bias cube on that area, so you know, continuously for more than second. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now let's enter into some depth, right? We add something extra to that. See, this is this is a suture. right this is a suture this is the suture which is between parietal and temporal so we can name it like temporoparietal sure we can but it can also be called as the squamosal squamosal suture right nothing to worry about the squamous means flat so in case of this temporal bone this is temporal right this portion is called as the squamous part squamous part of temporal bone so it is squamous temporal means it is flat right so it means is there any different shape part also yes it is this posterior one this is the mastoid part right that's the mastoid part this one so it means that this particular temporal has got the squamous part and the mastoid part good okay so this is the squamosal suture also called as the parietotemporal 
and you already know about this that this portion that is the lambda and this suture when it goes on the top this is called as the bregma right bregma is where the sagittal and the coronal would meet and that's our right crown that's our crown and someone is telling that we draw the crown like as we were drawing it in childhood but actually we were doing it like this huh? so that is crown okay now see how nicely we really watch this part and that is terion right that is terion in terion this is h shaped correct h shaped so we we can draw it like this is like this 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 it is h shaped h and inside this is the sphenoid bone right that's the sphenoid bone this one would be the zygomatic and that's the entire is zygomatic arch right and now you can say it very confidently that which bone is this well that is maxillary right upper jaw right upper jaw zygomatic was that cheekbone these are what styloid process right stylish styloid process and this is muscular mastoid right muscular mastoid and very important big powerful muscles will be attached to the mastoid process in between hello hello right that is the external auditory meatus external auditory meatus auditory is a simple word sometimes it is also called as the external acoustic meatus right acoustic is stylish word and more scientific word for the sounds right? all right now see this is a complete layout for the frontal bone right this is frontal and it is unpaired just one right you know it very well this one is maxilla that is upper jaw right upper jaw yeah terion is meeting point of in fact we should yeah it is meeting point of four bones that's right four bones or you can say four sutures right <laughs> n shaped how come n shaped mm -hmm. okay see now it will look like h right so this this and this and this is terion right so this is maxilla upper jaw and this one is cheekbone right the zygomatic cheekbone opposite side right the maxilla right so this is now orient start orienting yourself this is right this is left so this is right maxilla and this one would be right zygomatic and say this is what we watch styloid process that one is mastoid right now see this is zygomatic and now keeping in mind that's 
maxillary. Once we have highlighted maxillary, see how clearly we see the zygomatic bone. So this means zygomatic has got two processes, right? It is going like this. So this is going towards this portion is going towards temporal bone. So we'll call it temporal process of zygomatic bone forming the zygomatic arch, right? How, how impressive it looks like as such it is so simple and right? this is the zygomatic bone. This is one process which is going towards the temporal bone and that's why we are calling it a temporal branch and as it is forming the entire arch so that's why this portion right what i mean to say is this portion that portion this one that is called as the temporal branch of temporal process temporal branches they are in artery temporal process of zygomatic bone and it is forming what zygomatic arch right okay now in this rest of the structures now they are pretty clear to you right so i'll just this one you know it is bragma this one that is lambda right that is lambda and this suture that is that square mosel suture right this one is muscular mustoid this is stylish styloid and this one is hello hello external auditory meatus or the external acoustic meatus right that one is zygomatic arch and sphenoid temporal parietal frontal occipital all those bones along with the maxilla they are now known to you okay here it is the better representation of the of the zygomatic right now it is seen very clearly that how exactly it is forming those two processes right and yes as such if you really see the zygomatic bone it is giving less contribution to the formation of zygomatic arch that's why we said that this this temporal it is a good hearted bone so it, it's not objecting at all telling this entire arch all the way from here and up to this point then what is called as the zygomatic arch right? otherwise this bone has got all the rights to fight and to tell this thing as a temporal arch but it is zygomatic and here it is this one is right that chupawa bone right that is the sphenoid but this sphenoid right as as it is looking like such a small simple decent right very shy bone actually it is not at all right when we look at the interior of the skull we'll see that this bone is monstrous right and actually what you what you just said that yes it is the keystone bone right that is good i'll just write down it is a keystone bone you guys keep on giving good words huh? keystone bone yeah it is a keystone bone of the skull a process that's projecting towards the frontal bone from zygomatic bone yeah right so that would be called as the frontal process right you only answered it so if the this is zygomatic i think you are talking about this part right so yes that's right this is if you call this as the temporal process so definitely we'll call this as the frontal process because it is going towards the frontal bone right simple as that okay so this is about the keystone keystone bone sphenoid now that's actually the temporal right temporal bone butterfly shaped bone yeah it is it is it is in fact the sphenoid na 
Sphenoid is like a butterfly. Butterfly who has got a, a great wing and the lesser wing, bigger wings and smaller wings. We will see both the wings. Right. So this is a good hearted, right? good hearted temporal bone. And how much we need to know about it? Two things which we have already talked about, but still we need to talk about it. One, this is the squamous part, right? Which is the squamous part. And this is the mastoid part. This mastoid part is tough, is strong. Rest, we have talked about external radiometers, mastoid process and the styloid process and the zygomatic arch. And it is this point, this point, right? This one, this one is where it would be, say, external acoustic meatus, right? Rest is all for those temporomandibular joints. Okay. Easy, right? Need to, now you have picked up. So this is rital. And I'll not tell what is this. I'll not tell what is this. I'll not tell what is this, right? You are smart enough to know about this. I'll also not tell which suture is this, right? You know about it. Okay. I'll also not tell which suture is this, right? You know it. So, bregma, <laughs> lambda, lambdoid suture, lambdoid suture, right? And the squamosal suture. And this is that H-shaped, right? H-shaped and it is terion. Good one. Occipital, right? Very easy. Now let's add something to that. Take your hand back and just try to feel the most prominent area on the occipital bone. Most prominent part. So this is external, right? This is what you are feeling. It is... So its name is very easy, external occipital protuberance, right? It is external occipital protuberance. So it is prominent, right? You can feel it. But why they said external? It means there has to be internal. Yes, it is there and we'll see that, right? So there is external and internal occipital protuberance. So it means internal would be just inside yeah it is just inside right a prominent portion yeah this one long awaited right we were waiting for him and this is that right i'll i'll now draw it like this only right so this is that coronal or the crown right and this one this one right this is sagittal and and that one, that one is lambdoid. So done, right? So this is pragma. And this one is lambda. And both of them, they are fontanelles, right? So this is anterior and this one is posterior posterior fontanelle so they are open or in fact they are very soft at the time of birth right so so it's like what is the importance of this bregma right in interview if you say just to palpate the brain right never give that answer because there is nothing you can do by palpating the brain in fact you can injure right so Never say that it is to palpate the brain. It is so soft, yes, it is immediately just underneath is the brain. Okay. Now we are becoming more exploratory. Right? What we have done is we have removed that frontal bone. Right? So see, frontal bone has been removed. And very artistically, what we are doing is, absolutely from the front, we are watching the posterior surface of the occiput. Right? Getting my point? Right? What you are watching, what you are watching, this, this suture, this suture is that lambdoid suture. Right? So this is occipital bone. Right? That is occipital bone. 
so we have removed we have removed the frontal and then all the way we are watching the posterior part it is like we are watching the occipital and the front surface of the occ occipital right so it is inside if it is inside this is what is called as the internal internal occipital protuberance protuberance so that is external internal occipital protuberance now can you can you see that it is just forming this this cross right with internal occipital protuberance in the center right and that cross that cross this 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 it is what is called as the very rightly said cruciform right cruciform eminence cruciform eminence now if these are the spaces so there has to be something inside it right there has to be something and they are so prominent right you can appreciate that they are pretty prominent and in the bone with so much of prominence well very important thing which is lying over here is new word coming up sinuses now these are venous sinus right we'll just have a look at it these are the venous sinus it means these venous sinus because blood supply of the brain is super rich so these venous sinuses right they are the veins we'll see the formation but who will be lying over here now think it this way imagine from the posterior right something which is going up it means it will be following all the way to the sagittal suture correct so this one this one this portion this portion that would be where the superior sagittal sinus would be there sinus means it is like venous sinus right it would be venous right so big vein is passing and that is what is called as the superior sagittal sinus so that is up on both the sides right they are absolutely going like this so they are very rightly will say tell them as transverse transverse sinus so that is easy transverse sinus and then this one which is going right below so that would be called as the occipital sinus right occipital sinus things are not ending at this point just keep in mind that there is one more right this time you have to think in 3d right so if we say this is y axis this is z axis right so this is y axis y axis this is this is x axis this is y axis so then the axis which is from me and it is going towards you that would be the z axis right it would be the z axis so that's how right when we when we really draw it in multiplanes we draw it something like that correct so that is the z axis this is the x axis this is the y axis so think it like on the y axis you have got the sagittal sinus on the x axis on both the sides right you have got the transverse sinus on the negative of the y that is minus y you have got the occipital sinus but then there is some one more sinus which is on the z axis here you just keep in mind when it will come right i'll show you right right now will not complicate it but this is the beauty of the head and neck where you have to really think it in 3d right it is no more like just anterior and posterior right it is actually now from this point onwards things would be will be adding the third dimension also okay see this zoom 
and how nicely you can really appreciate every piece of it right say this this is superior sagittal superior sagittal sinus then on both the sides so we'll call this thing as the transverse sinus right that is easy transverse sinus and something which is going down right though it looks like so patla right this one this one is occipital sinus all right so then what is this this one this one well for that we go to the second image in fact what it is see the angle we are watching from the front so from posterior it is going like this so it is the same thing it is the superior sagittal sinus this one this is superior sagittal sinus to appreciate it more that is transverse right that is transverse sinus and here it is now got it right we have tilted the skull slightly and now we are watching the full view of superior sagittal sinus right completely clear okay now this superior sagittal sinus so obviously it would be following that sagittal suture right so it will be following that sagittal suture adding something extra to this now yeah because see there is always a confusion that how exactly everything is is arranged so all the way see these are veins so we'll understand this and we'll reach till the heart right so here it is uh okay from upper limb right we start with this upper limb from upper limb because these are the veins so everything will be going towards the heart right so from upper limb the entire deoxygenated blood right it is the deoxygenated blood that would be carried all the way by that axillary and finally it will come down to subclavian right so here it is the subclavian vein right because subclavian vein is getting this is right subclavian vein for for veins it is same right there there would be some variation into the arteries when we're talking about it but over here it is same on both the sides so it is the right subclavian vein which comes over here now there is one tributary right which is coming from the top and that is external jugular jugular vein see for the blood supply of of head and neck things are pretty easy all the externals they will be supplying the face scalp and all the internals they'll be going inside the brain right and that's where they will be doing their operations so here you have got this external jugular vein which is over here that external jugular vein will come from the top right and it will merge it will land into the subclavian vein now when it will be landing into the subclavian vein because this subclavian vein then will be it will be called as the brachiocephalic vein right and then both the brachiocephalic would join together to form superior vena cava and that superior vena cava will go into the right atrium true right so here important thing is that there would be valves there are in fact two valves right i just put a star and i'll write it over here that there are two valves 
In veins, we, get, we find valves, right? But over here, it is very important because this deoxygenated blood, which is coming all the way from the upper limb, right? This should not go back against any of the pressure. So that's why those valves are there, right? So this is the location of those valves. And this external jugular vein joins and it leads to formation of now this is what is called as the brachiocephalic vein, right? Obviously the right side. So it would be brachiocephalic vein. All right. Two structures we have not yet touched. Right? Two structures. Now this brachiocephalic vein, see what happens. So this is brachiocephalic, right? Brachiocephalic, this is right. And the left side, right? So this would be the brachiocephalic on the left side. Both of them, they meet, they go, and they lead to formation of the superior vena cava. And then that thing would go into the right atrium, right? And yes, this is from where the upper limb blood is coming. Right, so upper limb deoxygenated blood is by this. From the top, it is the head and neck and brain, right? And what happens in case of lower limb? Well, for lower limb, it is the inferior vena cava because that is formed by the formation of this common iliac, right? Common iliac vein, right and left, right? And then they are external, internal, all those things. And one more thing, see in this inferior vena cava, the entire GIT, entire GIT in which there is superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric, right? So, how do they form? What they do is, that's how the superior mesenteric goes, that's the inferior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric, it lands into superior, the splenic, right? That's splenic, superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric. And it leads to formation of that portal vein. That portal vein goes into the liver. Liver processes all those nutritions or toxins or whatever things one has consumed. And those hepatic veins, they will be draining into the IVC. Right? So it is the hepatic vein which will be taking care of the GIT. Lower limb is by these common iliacs. And then thus this entire blood, it reaches to right atrium, right? So that's how the entire venous system of the body, right? It is arranged. Okay. We have not yet touched two, two portions. One, if this is external jugular, then this bigger one, this bigger one is internal jugular vein. And as we said that it is the internals, they will be going deep into the brain, Right? So that is internal jugular vein. But highlighted is someone who is very special. Right? And that is what is called as the vertebral vein. It is called as the vertebral brain. Vein. Brain is a rich, rich organ. Right? It has got huge blood supply. So for the backup, right? These, these vertebral veins are there. So at the base of the brain, right, they really form a very nice meeting which is called as the circle of Willis, right. That is where these vertebral veins would be, will be taking a big role. Okay. And where exactly they, they really land? Well, see, now we have changed the orientation. We are watching from the back, correct? So this is, this is like occiput. Right? So we are watching from the back. Because these vertebral veins, right, from, so that's the, so that's the vertebral vein. Remember vertebral vein, so they are coming from the top, right? Now these vertebral veins, they will be landing into brachiocephalic vein, right? They will be landing into brachiocephalic. But, and, and this one is, that is internal jugular vein. Internal jugular vein. Now, in internal jugular vein, there would be two very important structure. One, one, can you see a prominence over here, right? 
prominence over here. Keep in mind, because this will be important from the physiology point of view, but right now, can you see that this internal jugular vein, which will be landing into brachiocephalic vein, correct? Because from here, so they are brachiocephalic, right? From here, they are brachiocephalic. So it means vertebral and the internal jugular will be landing into brachiocephalic and before it lands, this prominence, right? Watch how prominent it is, this dilatation, this one. This is called as the infi this is called as the bulb bulb of internal jugular vein but well there is one more bulb it is above so that means we need to say something extra to that and that's why this is called as the inferior bulb inferior bulb of internal jugular vein right so to complete the picture say we we can draw something like this Right? To, to have a complete clarity, subclavian, subclavian, right? So I'll just write it in short. Subclavian vein, right? From here, there comes the external jugular vein. Now it continues its journey, right? And then now we'll call it a brachiocephalic, correct? From the top, there comes the vertebral, and then comes the bigger one right bigger one and will make it prominent because this is that inferior bulb so this is internal jugular vein and this brachiocephalic it continues right same thing happens on the opposite side right this is left side brachiocephalic and yes that's the bulb right that's the internal jugular and then there is that vertebral vertebral and from this point there lands the external jugular right from here onwards it is called as the subclavian and both of them they lead to formation of superior vena cava and that goes into right right atrium well this type of heart it can be drawn at any stage right so this is right atrium so that's how the systems they really go right Okay, now we go for something in detail. What has been done is, on one side, on one side, on this side, to make it clear, vertebral vein has been removed. Right, where is vertebral vein? Here it is. Right, that one is vertebral vein. Right, so we have removed it from the opposite side. Simply, something which is inside is internal jugular, ex outside is external jugular. So this is external jugular vein, and this one would be this one would be internal jugular vein. And yes, see the prominence, right? There is prominence. So that is that inferior bulb, right? Inferior bulb of internal jugular vein, and say this external jugular right it is landing into subclavian well we call this thing as subclavian it means there would be valves over here so we'll just write valves and there are two valves so we'll write two valves right and from this point onwards this would be called as the brachiocephalic and yes in this is landing into that right because we have removed the vertebral otherwise vertebral would have landed here only Right. But this is just to give you the clarity. Now, arteries should not feel bad. Right? So, this is now about the arteries. But for arteries, go back to that arch of aorta. Right? So, before we enter into this, we need to understand that arch of aorta very well. Because then, this structure would become much easier. So here is our left ventricle, right? Why to draw, draw left ventricle like this, right? Here is the heart, right? And let's say this is left ventricle. From left ventricle, there goes the arch of aorta, right? And then it goes all the way. But right now we'll be focusing only on arch of aorta. In arch of aorta, 
now the area of interest on the right side there is right brachiocephalic correct right brachiocephalic three arteries they merge then the left carotid left common carotid artery that would go straight and then there would be left subclavian artery right and from left subclavian artery again it will go like this and then this would be continuing as left axillary artery which will be going for the upper limb right so let it go we are interested in this top one so that is this one this one is left carotid i mean left common carotid artery and this one is left vertebral artery right vertebral artery all our arteries what about the right side well in right side there is only right brachiocephalic which would be continuing as the subclavian which would be continuing as axillary right obviously right side but then from brachiocephalic here goes the right common carotid artery right and from subclavian there goes the right vertebral artery right so that's how the entire picture is let's see it with better zoom zoom here it is here it is <clears throat> so let's say this is arch of aorta so then this is what this is right brachiocephalic artery right then so this is one then that is common carotid right but it is the left common carotid artery this is what this is left subclavian artery this left subclavian would be continuing as axillary right so we are not drawing it we are not drawing it we'll draw only what is what we need to focus on okay then here it is that is vertebral right the right vertebral artery similarly over here this is right oh sorry left left vertebral artery fine so this is common carotid artery right this one and this one right and left right we wrote so this common carotid artery so this common carotid artery name is common so it will be divided into external and internal carotid artery right external and internal carotid artery internal carotid artery external will be supplying external so it means it will be supplying to face right to face so that means it would be giving one it should give one artery for the face and we should name it like facial artery here it is this is the facial artery and you must have guessed right the only artery which is so prominent and here it is that is the facial artery no doubt there are so many other branches but this is like we are just building up the concept that whenever there is external that means it is towards the face scalp right that is called as the scalp so that is all external and when it goes to internal it means through some specific foramen it will be entering inside the skull right so that's now what we need to watch right so this part is good okay here it is with slightly better clarity right and uh, would like to show you one more thing this is in in this image though it is not seen very properly 
So I'll just draw it, but then in there is one more image in which we'll see it with more detail. And it is, say whenever there is common carotid artery, right? So that I'll draw it over here. This is common carotid. That common carotid will give a branch and that is, that is external carotid artery, right? This is external carotid artery and the main artery, it will continue. This is common carotid artery and this thing would continue as internal carotid artery. As soon as that external carotid artery is given, this area is prominent it is dilated. This is very, very important, right? Just over here, very important. This is called as the carotid sinus, right? It is called as the carotid sinus. So it is a dilated part. Now this is carrying what? It is carrying those baroreceptors, right? It is carrying those baroreceptors. Baro means pressure. So these are the these are the pressure receptors, right? So when the pressure increases, yes, they will be sending those because they are having this, these visceral afferent fibers, right? Afferent fibers, right? In the brain, afferents are coming, efferents are going. So here, these are the visceral afferents which will be carrying the information that yes, yes, blood pressure has increased, pressure has increased, right? So it will be that thing will be carried up. Now, as you know, these fibers, they don't travel lonely, right? They travel in some nerves and that is where the nerve would come and that is the cranial nerve number nine, right? Cranial nerve number nine. It is glossopharyngeal right it is glossopharyngeal so these visceral afferent fibers will be carrying the information of the pressure via glossopharyngeal nerve and and the brain would be informed so this is the visceral afferent right everything is calculated with respect to brain so in brain anything is coming is afferent anything which is going is efferent right so that's what is so important so over here if we just label all all the vessels right it should be now easier for you so that is our arch of aorta right this one is right brachiocephalic artery this one is left common carotid artery this one is left subclavian artery which will be continuing as over here the left axillary this is the right axillary right and then over here this which is which is going all the way and this is right common carotid artery right see right common left common right they go all the way up and this one is right vertebral artery in between the portion right we will call it right subclavian artery so in fact it is the brachiocephalic to subclavian to axillary it is just one and the same thing right same thing is going all the way but this vertebral and common carotid they are from subclavian right and that's how then they go all the way up which we'll see uh, yeah this is what I was talking about see that's the vertebral artery right that's the vertebral artery this one is common carotid artery right? see, see the angle right we are watching from the back from the from underneath and then it is going on there this is occipit this is occipital bone occipital and this common carotid as it is going up it gives off the branch externally so this is external carotid artery and then it continues its journey upwards as internal carotid artery but just over there right this is the bulge this is the prominence which we were talking about and that is carotid sinus right that is carotid sinus which has got baroreceptors pressure receptors meantime 
say this external carotid artery it gives one branch and that branch which is taking care of the face and this one is the facial artery right which is branch of external carotid artery right so done right. now see this internal carotid artery it has to go inside the skull so that means there would be a special opening for him right there would be a special opening and that's what we need to see now before we do that let's see again we remove that frontal part and now we are watching only those vessels right which are those vessels this is that internal carotid artery this is that internal carotid artery which has now entered inside the inside the skull now it is inside the skull right obviously on the opposite side also but we have removed it now this internal carotid artery what it will do say there is again like a joint operation right how is it internal carotid comes over here right you remember that those vertebral arteries so those vertebral arteries they will join together right so i'm drawing it like this right those vertebral arteries would join together to form basilar artery basilar artery so obviously this will be from the lower end right but say from there this is vertebral this is vertebral right left they join and this is basilar and that basilar artery is is this this one that is basilar <coughs> that is the basilar right so this internal carotid it gives one branch and this one this one is called as the middle cerebral because see in the brain this is cerebrum right so right now we are almost in the middle right so this area this has to be the middle cerebral this is cerebellum right which is cerebellum right that chota dimag nana patekar right and this one is the midbrain right it's the midbrain you must be thinking i i just yes we used to watch lots of movies and and then nana patekar when you used to say that chota dimag yes then we remember oh yes yes this is how and then you start discussing Oh, all about the cerebellum and 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 yes these things would come when we'll be talking about cerebellum and and trust me actually in that dialogue because on youtube if we try to put that video na to immediately it would be blocked because it is like copyright but actually in that dialogue there are so many things about cerebellum right so anyway let cerebellum come we'll we'll discuss it so here it is middle cerebral middle cerebral artery right the basilar artery and then there is one artery which will be going which will be coming in front right it is like this so we'll call this thing as anterior cerebral artery cerebral artery so how good it is right internal carotid comes on side it gives middle cerebral and then it comes in front that is anterior cerebral right on the posterior side there is basilar which is formed by the formation of those two vertebral arteries okay any doubt let me know here it is the zoomed version right this will make things absolutely clean so this is our internal carotid artery and this one is middle cerebral artery and this one is anterior cerebral artery right and this one is the basilar right all those other twigs don't worry much about it right this is how the major formation right so this is internal cerebral artery and here right it gives one branch this is middle cerebral 
right? Because these nodes will be remaining with you, so you don't make a mistake. And then this one would be the anterior cerebral. Because if only C is written, sometimes it may give you the confusion of cerebellum, right? And B is basilar, right? It is B is basilar. And basilar is formed by the joint operations of both the vertebral artery, right? Right vertebral and the left vertebral. So that's how it forms. Right, so then this you know, this is middle cerebral artery and yeah, this one is middle cerebral artery and this one is anterior cerebral artery. All these things will be coming back when we'll be discussing blood supply of brain, right? Every twig, every branch will be discussed in detail, but trust me, knowing this much, at that point, you'll find things so easy, so familiar and very interesting. By the way, right, this phenoid is telling, why are you forgetting me? So this is, this is like, let's write it down over here, lesser wing of sphenoid, right? This is a smaller wing. So where, where is the bigger one, right? It will come. But this, this bone, this bone, this one, this one, this one, this one, that is the lesser wing, right? That is lesser wing of sphenoid. See, that bone was looking so small, right? But it is that big, right? And it has got sides, both the sides. Okay, here it is now. This is standard occipit, occipital, right? So... occipital bone and this one is external occipital protuberance right the most prominent part one two rows three right all those prominent lines they are there they are called as the nuchal lines They are called as the nuchal lines. So this one, which is absolutely on its most superior position, right? At its most supreme position, it is called as the supreme nuchal line. This is superior one because there is one more which is inferior. So it is called as the inferior nuchal lines, right? So these are the lines. This is external occipital protuberance. Right, and this vertical, right? This vertical prominence, this one, it is called as the occipital crest. But well, there is one more occipital crest inside. So okay, in that case, we'll call it external occipital crest. Right, done. And this point, this point is just that lambda, right? And this one is lambdoid suture. Right? It is lambdoid suture. Okay. Now, when we tilt it still further, now what we are watching is the base of the skull. Right? This is base. This is base of the skull. In the base, this is the big one, foramen magnum, right? It is a huge one. It is foramen magnum. So, this is occipital bone. The bone, the part of the bone which is behind the foramen magnum, it is called as the squamous part, right? It is called as the squamous part. The part which is in front of the front of the magnum, foramen magnum, right? Squamous part of occipital, occipital bone, right? And part which is in front, this is called as the basilar part. 
of occipital bone. So it is also called as the basi occiput, right? Basi occiput. So we'll draw it like this, this, and and this. So here is the squamous. Here is the basilar. So what about those on the sides? They are lateral, right? They are the lateral part of occipital bone. This one, right? So that's how they are arranged. Tomorrow, as we'll be talking about those vertebras, see this is the prominence. These are occipital condyles and there is the articular facet. So when we say yes, right, when that movement is there, in fact, these occipital condyles and on top of it, there is C1, on underneath, there is C1, right? So that's how those, they glide and then they say yes, right? So that yes or lateral tilt, right, that is all thanks to this particular joint. That is Atlanto, Atlanto occipital joint, right? So this is occiput, then there is atlas, then there is axis, right? This is the name of C1, axis is the name of C2. So this particular joint, that's the joint what we are talking about, this one, occipital condyle. So that's why it is called as the Atlanto occipital joint, right? That is for yes. And this atlanto axial joint because over here there would be process called odontoid process right axis and that is for the movement of no because it is it provides axis and the whole head moves like this so it is like when you say no that is by between c1 c2 right and that is what is handled by those ligaments because there is no no intervertebral disc so they are the articular facets. Here it is with bit more clarity, right? So now we know this part. This is supreme. This is superior. This one is inferior. All those are nuchal lines. Right? There would be specific muscles attached to all of them, right? Which we'll be discussing. And this is external occipital protuberance. So that is good. And this one is occipital crest. And as we said this, right, there was a voice from inside that I am there. So we just name it as external because that internal occipital crest was shouting. This is foramen magnum, right? This one is foramen magnum right magnum means big yes there cannot be any bigger than this so that is foramen magnum these are occipital condyles right where the articulation will be there so these are the articular facets and meantime this particular bone right we have not remembered him. This is that temporal bone, right? Which is on both the sides. So that is temporal bone. And that's the muscular mustoid. So this is the mustoid part of the temporal bone, right? And here is that zygomatic arch, right? So that is zygomatic arch. Just orient very properly, right? Now we are, what we are watching is the base of the skull. So that's what we saw major structures which we have seen over here now comes two important thing one i'll remove this line over here right so let's let, I'll, I'll draw it like this okay i'm zooming it at one portion and it is so important which is called as the jugular fossa 
here it is this is this one right that is called as the jugular fossa we change the color right it is jugular fossa so what right why it is so important this is just one word would be enough this is the place for that superior bulb of internal jugular vein right now you remember that in internal jugular vein there was one inferior bulb here is the superior bulb right that is for superior bulb of internal jugular vein that's it this is the place that would be over there <coughs> one more now it's absolutely fine even if you forget this part right say so this is zoom see the bone on this base occiput there is one area this area right this one as such it will come again but this is what is called as the pharyngeal tubercle right pharyngeal tubercle so think it like that that's the whole skull now just the skull is complete the skull is complete and then for the lower structures that's where the neck would come and all those structures for the swallowing right for the breathing all those for speaking all those structures are going to come over there that's where the pharynx will be coming into picture and in pharynx there is something what is called as the raphe right raphe pharyngeal raphe raphe means like this so that's what would be attached at this pharyngeal tubercle right just this much is enough right as such when pharynx would come this this will come again but i'm just writing for pharyngeal raphe yeah few questions like the atlas cycle symbol in which <laughs> yes it is like that it is like that and it is so interesting and and because that process if it breaks right it actually damages the brain so that's why very important in martial arts right so many vulnerable points they are into our body but in in head and neck they are very vital okay well now you know this thing very well right so we'll not be spending much time on it this is like lambda this is sagittal suture this is the lambdoid suture and this is supreme nuchal line this is superior nuchal line this is inferior nuchal line external occipital protuberance and the occipital crest and here is and here is how can we forget our stylish styloid process and this is the muscular mastoid process right all good right let's move on to the next one yeah now this is see, this is absolute the vital of the vitals this is inside inside the skull now we have sliced all the all the above bones right so we have removed frontal we have removed parietals we have cut even the partial occipital and this is the inside of the skull drawing see over here this one this one and this one this is frontal see so interesting frontal was not only on the top yeah it is forming the base also right this is this bone right we have not talked much about it so it is ethmoid so that's it now we will we'll not be talking right now much about it now see the thing the interesting part is now coming up here it is all the way here all the way here right and then it is say this is like this 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 is 
this is in fact sphenoid right so you remember sphenoid which is seen on both the sides but actually it is one big one and this is what is the body this is the body and this is the lesser wing lesser wing of sphenoid and this is the greater wing this is the greater wing right it is sphenoid and that is the key bone of this entire because it is it is forming it is a tough bone right it is so it is forming the entire middle structure okay now over here as we go from this right and all the way these are the sutures we are just following the sutural lines right sutural lines oh sorry the sutural lines so this would be it has to be temporal right temporal but in temporal say this portion right this portion this one right it is very prominent it is very prominent it is thick prominent see zoom see here it is you can see the prominent ridge right and this is this is like a very elevated structure so that is what is called as the petrous part and this flat structure it is called as the squamous part so this is squamous and this is the petrous both petrous part and the squamous part and that that auditory meatus right that external auditory meatus all the way over here this one is internal auditory meatus internal auditory meatus right so that is internal auditory meatus now we learn some important foramen so zoom again this one the first one what is the shape it is oval shape right oval shape so we'll call it oval so this is foramen oval right foramen oval what passes through wait right don't worry so we'll call it foramen oval now say you remember that internal carotid artery internal carotid artery would was entering inside the skull right through the carotid canal that carotid canal would open over here and that's the area that's the area this one or right? this one this one that is where it would open and this is what is called as the foramen lacerum foramen lacerum remember into bracket carotid canal ends here so carotid canal is something which we see at the base of the skull right internal carotid artery enters and it comes inside the skull and it comes inside via this foramen lacerum right so this is one there are other structures but right now we will not be talking about it internal auditory meatus is something important right from here it starts like say it leads to cranial nerve number seven and cranial nerve number eight right they'll be coming out they'll be going into this so seven is what it is facial and eight is vestibulocochlear 
right which is for auditory and balance vestibulo cochlear the nerves nerves so seven eight via internal auditory meatus right seven eight then the jugular one right that internal jugular see the big area zoom zoom here it is and and we will be watching several figures over here so this one right another color would be appreciated yes so oh, sorry this one right this one that is jugular foramen jugular foramen so we have talked about seven and eight so this jugular foramen which will be carrying internal jugular vein but it will also be giving passage to cranial nerve number nine number 10 and number 11 right number nine which is called as the glossopharyngeal number 10 which is vagus and 11 is spinal accessory spinal accessory so 7 8 9 10 11 that means only one to go right only one to go hypoglossal now see this hypoglossal we have to watch it in uh internal carotid artery okay just let me write right so this is in fact i'll show you also in one of the image right but i'm, I'm writing internal carotid artery it goes through carotid canal right carotid canal and then it it is into the skull but when it comes out inside the skull this area right this area is called as the foramen lacerum foramen lacerum right and then it is inside the skull inside the skull so this is a sort of canal right in which this carotid artery travels and it comes out is this right okay so internal auditory meatus it gives the passage to cranial nerve number seven and eight jugular foramen with will give the passage to cranial now number 9 number 10 and number 11 now about the 12th one right for the 12th one this is not the right image but i'll just give you a location will will be tilting the skull to watch it very properly right it is this area this area this area so if we really tilt it then we'll be able to see that yes there is hypoglossal canal right here it is that's the point for hypoglossal canal and that is cranial nerve number 12 right number 12 so thus 7 8 9 10 11 12 they are done right rest of them with 1 to 6 right they will be in front right? so it, it will come but so far everything is clean right so we have learned foramen oval we know about this now foramen oval foramen oval then this one is foramen lacerum foramen lacerum right and the internal auditory meatus jugular foramen hypoglossal canal right? that much is done though there are some other structures but this is good to start with okay. i know in head and neck it would happen sessions will be a bit longer okay so this is superior sagittal sinus right that entire curve Right, superior sagittal sinus and then from both the sides now see 
at that point we were looking from here right we we were we removed the frontal this is anterior this is posterior because this is occipital bone see the foramen magnum is there right so this is posterior this is posterior then these were right that that was over here that internal occipital protuberance and from there both the sides the transverse sinus was going so this is that transverse sinus right how nice and that transverse sinus takes turn and this is now a new thing coming up it is called as the sigmoid sinus we were not able to see the sigmoid sinus because it was taking turn right we were unable to see that similarly over here that's one that one is what is called as the cavernous sinus right it is called as the cavernous sinus right so this watching it now from the other angle right it makes the entire picture crystal clear this is sag sinus right sagittal sinus and then from both the sides right it is going so this one would be the transverse sinus right that transverse sinus is taking the turn so that's why this one would be called as the sigmoid sinus s shaped sigmoid sinus right and then the anteriorly cavernous sinus right will be discussing cavernous sinus at length but that's where the entire group meeting is formed and now that z axis z axis in this you need to appreciate it like this there was sagittal sinus right then there was occipital sinus correct occipital sinus where is it here it is see it is going down right over here this one this one is occipital sinus occipital sinus so that is occipital on both the sides there was transverse sinus and then as a z axis right z axis which is going like this that is that is one which is the straight sinus name is so easy right straight sinus so where is that straight sinus this was the junction occipital protuberance so this one that one is straight sinus that is our z axis right so think it like it is coming in front right top sigmoid down occiput both the sides transverse and then straight is coming up right so this is what going in front right that is straight sinus yeah here is your your question right regarding this internal carotid here it is zoom zoom see this is internal carotid right this one internal carotid artery and that is coming into the skull right then that is via and that this opening it is what is called as the foramen laserum laserum now this tells there is one more foramen over here and there is one more foramen over here right that is foramen oval or oval it what foramen oval and the foramen spinosum now see foramen spinosum just remember 3m right because it is the easiest one to remember middle meningeal artery middle meningeal vein and and mandibular mandibular now right but not the direct one again the same num name meningeal so it is meningeal branch so easy 
Remember it like 3M, middle meningeal artery, middle meningeal vein and the meningeal branch of the mandibular nerve that is what would be passing through foramen spinosum, right? So foramen novel, foramen spinosum, internal carotid artery, now we know it very well, foramen lacerum because it is coming via that, foramen lacerum, magnum you already know, right? And then what else? Yeah, this is this is that internal acoustic meatus, right? And the underneath is that jugular foramen. And this was the location of that hypoglossal, right? But we'll see it in another image. Yeah, here it is seen better, right? Much better. So we'll be able to see this is so here is this is the location where the pituitary will be resting right this is the body of sphenoid so this one would was the lesser wing right this is the lesser wing so this one is the greater wing right see how greater it is how great it is the greater wing sphenoid so that entire sphenoid right it is over here and big one big one big one big one that's the sphenoid bone, right? Huge one. This is squamous temporal. Squamous temporal. And this one would be petrous. Petrous temporal. So tough. Right? So that is petrous temporal. Same way on the opposite side. This one, we talked about that rough sort of thing. That is lacerum, right? Foramen lacerum. And this is foramen oval, and that one is foramen spinosum, right? Spinosum, and we shall write 3M middle meningeal artery, middle meningeal vein, and the meningeal branch of mandibular now, right? And over here, this is internal acoustic meatus. Internal acoustic meatus, so start with 7, facial and vestibulocochlear, that is what it would carry. And this one, Right, this one is jugular, right? It is the jugular foramen, and that would be carrying from this point onwards 9, 10, and 11. And this was the location, right? This is this was the location of that hypoglossal. So I'm just writing 12 because we have not yet seen it in with good clarity, right? So there has to be another image. Same thing, right? Now it is much easier. So all those points there i think you can use this thing for the for the revision right so here it is lesser lesser uh, wing that's the body this is greater wing squamous part of uh, temporal right this is the petrous part and you have got this foramen oval this is foramen spinosum that is foramen lacerum and say this is the basi occiput Right, this is the basi occiput foramen magnum, and this is internal auditory meatus, and this one would be the jugular foramen. Right, so let me erase all these marks so you can use it for practice. All good, right? So I don't have to even write now. This is external occipital protuberance. See the crest, so nice, right? That is occipital crest, external occipital crest, that's right. And these are like external occipital, uh, those occipital condyles, that is for the movement. This is muscular, mustoid, and the stylish stylet, right? So again, this thing can be used for, for your practice finally that's the temporal bone right so this is the temporal intemporal right things are known to use squamous part then mustoid part styloid part zygomatic arch right? all known okay right just a zoom view to see the things properly external acoustic meters styloid process mustard process all good 
same thing, right? But zoomed version. So all these images you can use it for the practice purpose. Now we move on to this, the final part. Things which we have discussed, right? But it would be a sort of quick revision. Plus, we'll be introducing two new things in this. First, the easier part. Forum and Magnum, right? These are occipital condyles. So far, good, right? Then, that one, this is base, right? This is base of the skull. And this one is carotid canal. So, internal carotid artery will be entering into this and then will be traveling into the bone and through foramen laserum it will come out. So, where is foramen laserum? That is foramen laserum. Foramen laserum. Right? That's what it is there. So, inside. Right? So, this is like through and through gap. But the artery would go, travel inside the bone and then it will come out through foramen laserum. Right? That's the zygomatic arch. Right? This is like that mastoid part of temporal and those are the foramen oval and foramen spinosum so i'll just write o over here and s over here that is foramen oval and foramen spinosum okay now see this if everything was easy till this point of time visualize it that sphenoid being the key bone of the skull, right, which is right in the middle. So, this means this is greater, this is the greater wing, right, this is the greater wing of sphenoid. So, things are not ending this much. So, it is like body, there is a lesser wing, there is a greater wing, but underneath, this is what is called as the pterygoid process. Can you really see over here, this right this see this one this one right they are called as the not pterygoids right they are pterygoid right they are called as the pterygoid process so this is these are the pterygoid processes of sphenoid of sphenoid Right. So, this is how they really work. And obviously, this one is squamous occiput. Right. Because this one is the basi occiput. So, this has to be the squamous occiput. And if this is the basi, this is the squamy, so this would be the lateral occiput. That is the lateral occipital, occipital, lateral part of the occipital bone. Right. This one would also be the lateral occipital. You might be asking for this, but don't worry much about it because it is an inconsistent structure. It is what is called as the condylar canal, right? This one is condylar canal. It is inconsistent. Sometimes it is present, sometimes not. So not to worry much about it. Sigmoid and cavernous sinus? All right. Sure. All right. So this is now what you see. Here we have tilted it a bit more. Why? Because we wanted to see that chupa, that structure which was not getting seen properly. Right? Here it is. Here it is. This one. That is hypoglossal canal. Right? It is underneath. It is underneath those uh, occipital condyles. So that is for the 12th one. Right? That is for the 12th one, hypoglossal canal. Otherwise rest, this one, this one is that jugular one, right? jugular foramen. So it will be giving 9, 10, 11, right? along with internal jugular vein. And that... Uh, Acoustic meters 
that will be for 7 and 8 right this one is carotid canal carotid canal and rest is all what we talked about foramen lacerum right that's foramen lacerum foramen oval right or all, all of them some palatine this is this is palate right this is palate so right now we are not touching the palate those greater palatine lesser palatine those these are the greater palatine lesser palatine foramen but right now let's not talk about it right no need so this is there the last and the final one right this is for the zoomed version here it is i'll just write the number this is hypoglossal right then this one is jugular so it would be like 9 10 11 and internal jugular vein right then this one is for carotid so it is carotid canal right and that's where it will come out so this is foramen lacerum that's foramen lacerum right okay you wanted for that sigmoid and cavernous sinus all right see here it is say as we were watching from the front right that cruciform eminence so that was the sig superior sagittal this was transverse right and this one is occiput occipital sinus these transverse they are then taking the turn and that's where the sigmoid sinus are coming into picture sigmoid so where are they here it is right this was the point where that cruciform eminence was getting formed and this is the transverse sinus and then this one this one that is the sigmoid sinus right so that is the sigmoid and anteriorly it is the cavernous sinus we have not talked much about cavernous sinus because it will be like an overload right on the day one right but this is the cavernous sinus which is at a very crucial place and then there are there is so much to learn about it right so these are the sinuses the idea is just you understand the location right how they are arranged the important point was that transverse sinus is there on the sides right occipital sinus which is going down right this one these are on the sides superior sagittal is taking all the way sagittal path right so that is superior sagittal right sagittal sinus that is superior sagittal right superior sagittal and then something which is to be learnt is that on the z axis z axis something which is going straight and that is the straight sinus and that's the straight sinus right that's the straight sinus all right so this was this was for today so that's it for today right thank you so much and yes there will be several marathon sessions for the head and neck because topics are such right i am saving this thing and i'll put it into our shared folder oh so many questions sigma Dhanaya. how much time will it take head and neck that's what i said don't ask don't ask it would take some time yes but if we are going for those longer sessions it would be much quicker but for the first seven to ten days it would be like as i said it would be exactly in this fashion right we'll keep on discussing we'll keep on till we are so familiar with all the terminology so that that theoretical portion will become very easy right thank you so much and see you tomorrow bye bye oh zoomed see bye